they don't see what I'm really working on and blah, blah, blah. And then she was like, Carla, like, how can I tell you this in a good way? But not everybody will like you. And that's fine. Mm. And I was like, what? She's like, yeah, you won't be liked by everyone. People will not like you just because the way you look like there's no reason. They'll just be like, I don't fucking like her. I believe that one of the principal reasons why navigating life in the 21st century is so difficult is because we don't get an emotional education. We're not taught to listen to ourselves. And I don't mean acting on the first impulse that you have or letting your emotions run your life. I mean, listening to your intuition, to what feels right and what doesn't feel right. That little internal voice that's so easily drowned out by our noisy and chaotic world. I got absolutely no education on this of any kind in public school. I was lucky to have a lot of support from my family, but you know, I still had to make a lot of mistakes and figure this out for myself. I had to ignore that internal voice to see the unhappiness that that brings. And this is why I am incredibly pleased to bring you a really lovely conversation that I had with my friend Carla Morrison, who is a super talented indie pop guitarist and singer from Mexico. She's a super cool person. I really enjoyed conversing with her. She's received two Grammy nominations and has won three Latin Grammys. Her music has received literally billions of streams across all platforms. And I wanted to have her on the podcast because she's such a sensitive, sweet person that has so many insights into the creative process. And in particular, on how to learn to listen to that little voice within you. We talked about a lot of things, including burnout, being an independent artist, you know, immigrant mindset amongst other topics. If you're unfamiliar with her music, please go check it out. What moves me the most about her work is that she pours herself so fully into it. She's on tour now for her latest album, and I'll also leave a link to get tickets if you'd like to see her play live. And if you enjoy this podcast and want to support my work, consider checking out Gur Clothing. It's my personal brand of clothes. I'll leave a link in the description. Thank you so much. And with that being said, I hope you enjoy. I think I have a unique opportunity here because there are so many people they probably look at you and think like, I mean, you are in many ways like the pinnacle of success. You've had so much, so many uh, awards and accolades and you've reached so many people. Mm-hmm. And, you know, especially I think it was like five, six years ago, mm-hmm. everything was looking so good on paper, mm-hmm. right? And yet something didn't feel right. Right. And that, and you went towards a burnout, right? Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if you'd be willing to use that word to yes. describe it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So clearly I think there's a disconnect, right? People misunderstand, mm-hmm. um, cause they associate these things with, with happiness and fulfillment and whatnot. Mm-hmm. What do you think, what do you think went wrong there? Like, how do you think things went off the rails for you? And how did you get back on track, you know, because it's been such an interesting, it's been so interesting talking to you about this, you know? Uh Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it was a a couple of different things that happened at the same time. Because we usually tend to, um, how do you say, like, um, to say like, oh, it was this reason. But usually it's many different reasons. I think for me was the fact of uh, that I'm independent. So when you're an independent artist, you work so hard that you don't allow yourself to even think that you're going to stop right. because it takes so long to get to a place. And then you're like, oh, like you don't want to stop. And then the other part of me being a woman, being, uh, you know, Mexican, Latina, I feel like that also puts you a lot of pressure because our cultures think that money and success and fame is what makes you happy. And we kind of believe it too, at some point. Um, Yeah, I bought into that. Yeah. I mean, I would like to think I know better, but I bought into that. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So you feel like, okay, I can't stop also because of that. And you, as a, also as independent artist, you're trying to build like a, uh, like a curriculum where you're like, okay, I can do this. And, and you want to be accepted overall. So you just don't want to stop fighting because, or, or, um, fighting for whatever you want that you just don't want to stop. And then it gets to a point where you're just saying yes to everything. Yes, yes, I'll do this. Yes, 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 of course I'll do this. Yeah. And, and you're also grateful at the same time because so many good things are happening to you that you feel like, why wouldn't, why would that be bad? 
And then I had a friend one time when I, I don't remember what Grammys I went to that I said, I'm, I'm, I'm just very overwhelmed. And, and I said, but I feel bad because it's all good things. Yeah. And she told me, well, being so happy is also stressful and stress is stress. Even if it's good or, or, or for bad things, it's stress. You're still kind of going through it. And I remember thinking that like stuck in my head. I was like, oh, she's right. And also because I never expected everything that happened to me to happen to me so quickly and so naturally. Even though when I was like two years old, I knew something was going to happen. Oh, really? Like I always knew something was going to happen. Like, like like being able to reach people? I, I don't know if it was that, but like something big. And I remember even like I had a best friend that told me I had a dream, Carla, and we were like 15. And she told me, I saw you with like really long red hair in like a festival you're singing and there were seas of people there to see you and the people from in front were trying to reach you and crying and I remember listening to this and thinking really and at this point I don't even write songs I don't do anything like music related so I'm thinking okay and then my dad also had a dream when I was seven years old and he said oh and I remember just overhearing this conversation he was having with my mom saying I was at a concert. I had this crazy dream. I was at a concert and so many people were there and it was one of my girls, but I, I couldn't see it was, if it was Alejandra or Carla. And I remember thinking, it was me, it was me, I know it was me. But I was seven. So even though all these things like were happening in my life, I never expected it to happen so quickly and for people to really fall in love with it and be so, like that it would resonate with them so much. And so I felt really grateful and at the same time guilty to even think to take like uh, some some sort of hiatus or some sort of uh, break. And so I feel like a lot of those different um, reasons wouldn't let me stop until until I just remember being before a show and thinking they, they were telling me it might get canceled because there's rain and we're in Cancun. And it was the last show, and I was like, oh, fuck it. Just, like, make it cancel it. Like, I don't care. Did it feel like a sense of relief? Yeah. Oh, yeah. L- like, kind of like, like I don't care anymore. Like just Isn't that interesting? You start to receive signs, almost like from your own body, mm-hmm. from your own spirit, telling mm-hmm. you, this doesn't feel good, and then, like, mm-hmm. something will happen like that, a yeah. sense of relief. I felt that. And you're like, whoa, wait a second. I thought this thing was supposed to be the thing that's making me happy and it's mm-hmm. it looks so good on paper i mean that's the thing that over and over again yeah i don't know if it's like the analytical part of my brain that's like yeah they should be making me happy like what's going on here yeah you know yeah um was it scary to listen it to that it was scary it was sad also because i was like what is this like i'm usually really happy this is supposed to be my dream job and i just don't feel it i feel like it's a nightmare and then I remember think, like thinking this over and over again and thinking, this is so strange. And then I started to get really dark thoughts, like really dark, like, like maybe it would be better if you weren't alive. Maybe it, like, cause also in Mexico, I was getting a lot of comparisons like to my colleagues and a lot of bullying, a lot of bullying. And I feel like it was just me just tired, just tired of kind of holding it together and being like, no, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And then there was a point where I was like, I can't, but I wasn't telling it to myself. I was kind of just like, like I I was just burned out. And then also as an independent artist, you do so many things like right now, like you're doing your podcast and you're like, damn, I need help, you know, (laughs) because I need to make sure this and this. So with me, it was all this stuff, like trying to pay the musicians, the band, you know, the booker, the manager thinking about like the vision and it is constant stress. It is constant stress, a lot of decision fatigue. And so that is also, it plays a big part into it because you're always thinking like, what's next? What's this? What's this? It's like, you're already like, I don't want to say a parent because that's different, but it's kind of like that. And, and also because you have a team of like in my industry or in my team it has to be like a 15 people you know team and so it's like there's so many roles to be done uh, yeah and i have to be the one that says hey you didn't do this right you did this right you're having difficult conversations and all of that is so tiring and so and then you're losing money you're making money it's creativity but you know you have to also kind of be able to make money to sustain it you're kind of being a business owner yeah exactly Exactly. And so that clashes with the creativity sometimes, uh-huh. doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Yes. It's 
pretty depressing. It <laughs> is. Oh my God. I'm so glad you said this because <laughs> it is the thing I'm constantly thinking yes, about. Yes. We all want to be artists, I think, but like in a vacuum, right? Where the laws of physics don't apply <laughs> yes. and you don't have to worry about making money and you don't have to worry about, cause I know that's not, I, I get the sense from mm-hmm. you that that is not a motivator. It's like no. money probably represents for you, if I'm not mistaken, oh, cool. Oh, okay, cool. Like I can continue to do this, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And have the help that I need, right? Yes. It's not really like a status thing. It's yeah. not like a power thing. It's more freedom, I think. It's more freedom, but at the same time, when you start to get older, <clears throat> it is something that you want. Sure. Because you, you want to make a family. You don't want to ha- have a family and you want to have other opportunities. Like in my in my own journey, like let's say work with other producers or other mixers or collaborate with other artists that I really really like and you know you have to have a certain status for that and and it's it's hard so it's like oh I have to play the game but I don't want to be the game and I you know it it, like it confronts you and it yeah it it doesn't it doesn't make it easy but at the same time you kind of have to kind of not take it too serious because at the end of the day is it's just entertainment you know, that's also something that I tried to tell myself before each show. It's like, this is a show that's happening just like a million more in the world right now. I'm not that special, you know? So it's just, it, it kind of gives you some, um, Solidity grounding. almost. Yeah. Yeah. Grounding. Like, okay, don't take it so serious. Like, of course, people right now that came to see you, you know, it means a lot to them, but there's so many other shows happening. So many other artists changing lives and doing things like just have fun you know and 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 I tried to have fun but back in that moment where I was really burned out it was very scary to to admit that to myself also because it was kind of also not only I I was kind of uh, being a rebel to myself right you weren't hitting the signals right like there were signs probably yeah it's like your spirit is telling you this isn't right girl like or whoever you are like this isn't right it doesn't feel right how do you feel your gut? You don't even feel your gut anymore. Right. You know, and it's like, you oh. Feel, you feel you went numb? Yes. Wow. Yeah, just numb, just not happy, just tired, just just like a baby that hasn't slept. You're just like, yeah, I don't want to be here. I don't like these people. People would ask me for pictures. I was just like, no, I don't know. Like, I just, I hated music. I remember when we moved to Paris, I blamed music. I was pissed at music. I was like, music made this to me. And I'm mad at it. Like, I was super upset. And then, obviously, with when time passed, I, re- I knew that it wasn't music. It was me. And it was all the decisions that I had made. And this was all my fault. But more than fault, my responsibility. And then I learned, okay, this, is, this comes from a story that I need to understand. I'm a book. And I have chapters. And I haven't read some chapters that I've been through. So I'm just blaming anything. You know, so I was like, okay, this is something that I, and of course my parents are people from, you know, my mom grew up in a, in a very poor family in Mexicali and my dad is from Durango. And when I say a poor family, I don't mean it in a a disrespectful way. What I, what I mean is that my mom really worked very hard for us. And my dad, um, was from Durango. He moved to San Diego. He was adopted and that's why I'm Morrison. So he was adopted and he worked really hard all his life and all that stuff. So I learned, they, they taught me what they knew and this isn't their fault, you know? And I just, it's just that I was just kind of repeating a cycle and it's hard. The truth hurts, you know, but the truth will set you free. So when I had to kind of like confront that, it was like, oh, this sucks so bad because this is, this is all in my hands. But yeah, I it's had the it. immigrant mindset that's sort of inherited, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. Yes, yes. And you feel guilty. I mean, like, at least in my case, you know, my okay. parents never made a big deal out of it, but they grew. They were kids, you know, in a dictatorship, right? Uh-huh. Cle- p- th- tens of thousands of people disappearing, um, you know, the dirty war, right, in Argentina. Yeah. And, and so it feels like they made so many sacrifices and then they Mm -hmm. worked their asses off. There's, it feels like I cannot give myself permission to do certain things, Uh but that leads to a kind of a destructive cycle Mm -hmm. that doesn't help anyone Mm -hmm. because really didn't they make all those sacrifices so that you could have a better life and have more opportunities. Right. So, 
and they also don't understand it when you're going through it you know because they're like well what's wrong Mika? like what, what what's going on and mm. it's like i'm just not happy and i remember my dad telling me like he told me like don't don't worry just go and have fun and and you'll come better than ever I remember, uh, like come back better than ever and i thought oh wow that's awesome that's that my a great dad, message to get that, that he told me that yeah because i felt like a relief and my mom also was like yeah do whatever you want Mika. just do it right just be happy you know and i was like oh okay but i'm here just having these conversations with myself thinking this is the worst like i shouldn't i shouldn't even though they weren't asking me for anything you just have this mindset that you have to be grateful and that these are just dumb problems there's people you know dying in the world that don't have food and i'm here being successful being pissed about being asked for a picture but it's just that it's different when you don't have any time for yourself and you're just constantly giving and giving and giving and you don't have anything to give yourself, that is a problem. And I feel like when you're sensitive, it's a whole different problem because you need to nurture yourself. And when you're an artist and you're giving so much to, to people that you know consume your art, is it's very important that you take time to yourself. But I didn't know that. I didn't know. I knew that until we moved here, which wasn't even my idea. It was my husband's idea. But in that moment, I remember thinking, man, I don't, I don't know what would have happened if we hadn't moved because I was miserable. Yeah. And being away made me really look at myself because French was new to me. And so I spent a lot of time in forced silence. And that brought up all the voices inside of me like, hey we haven't talked and that was like oh my god isn't like, that crazy that was crazy actually i think my theory is that the noise is always there but when you're go go mm -hmm. go all mm -hmm. the time you just don't have the time or energy to listen to those voices and quieting down makes those voices sound so much louder because mm -hmm. you're finally confronting them they mm -hmm. were always there you know and mm -hmm. that is one of the scariest things <laughs> you can do you know there's this idea i think of like to push yourself, you need to go out of your comfort zone, which I agree, and I, mm -hmm. I believe that. But for a lot of people, the it's easier to wrap your brain around, oh, I'll take a trip to the other end of the world and like climb a mountain or something. You know what I mean? But it could be just as scary or scarier, I think, to be in a quiet room, you know, and be yes. like, what is that ugly stuff that's <laughs> coming up within me, right? Yes. So yes. also a realization for me too, I think like what, can you imagine a world where they taught this sort of thing in like art classes and whatnot that you need to take the time and figure out yes. what's going on within you? Yes. We were talking a little bit about being sensitive just before this. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to ask you about this and, and actually my dad wanted me to ask this question too, because <laughs> as you know, he's a big fan of the music. Uh... <laughs> And I think the thing that we connect with, my, my dad and I, with your music mm -hmm. is and your, and your work is mm -hmm. how much you pour yourself into mm -hmm. it. You know, it is so clearly, so personal, mm -hmm. and that as a as a as a listener or as like a viewer or as an audience member, you feel that. You mm -hmm. know, but that level of intimacy in your work, <laughs> that level of sensitivity, yeah, it's intense, <laughs> right? <laughs> How how do you go about that? And how do you not get eaten alive by that and then sharing it with the whole world and bearing your soul, right? Like, how do you... Does that make sense? Yes. Because yeah, it, yeah. it is such an intense thing, um, especially as a sensitive person. Mm -hmm. I don't know to be any other way. That's I think that's the only way. And I also feel like the world uh is i mean being alive is an experience so i almost feel like i have this opportunity to be this open for people to see it so they can open up it's it's very strange i don't even have it very clear in I my mind i love how you just put that though but you know it's like it's it's just something that it, it's all it's kind of, it's, this is going to sound so stupid but this is kind of like the matrix movie <laughs> yeah <laughs> to me in, in what way <laughs> Like, like, I feel like we're all very uh, disconnected um, from our emotions. And I feel like we come to this world to feel so many things that we, that, that, that help us learn who we are and what direction we're going to and what we're providing for our journey. Not in, as in being alive, but I feel like our journey is larger than just being alive. It's just a larger thing. 
And so to me, it's almost as if I was assigned to wake people up when I'm singing. And it, and it also uh, heals me. So I know that sometimes when I'm like playing and I'm crying and I, I feel like I want to like not do that. Like, like my mind says, oh, I don't do that again, you know, but to me, it's, there's no other way to be like, I just have to be that way. And I've noticed that people really connect with that. And that that's what, um, they usually are very grateful for because they're like, Oh my God, like seeing you there, it made me realize all this stuff about my life or about who I am or my relationship. And I'm like, ex that's exactly why I sing. That's exactly why I make music. That's exactly, it's not the money. It's not the fame. It's not, it's nothing but that. And it, it almost, it's, uh, it's like, I feel like I'm a healer, but through music, because I feel like I have to be super honest because there's not a lot of it in the world. And so I feel like I have to do that. But I don't act it out. I don't no, like... No, no, and people would be able to tell. I, I would be able yeah. to... I feel like you'd pick up on that, you know? Yeah, 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 you'll pick up and on that. And that's yeah. the worst. That's the thing. <laughs> it goes from the best thing ever to the worst thing ever. Because I yeah. think it's it's got to be one of my favorite things about you as an artist mm -hmm. is that humanness. I mean, I think that's like the pinnacle. That's like the ultimate or one of the ultimate um, things that we get out of art right uh -huh. it's yes. like it's an expression of what it means to be human yeah, yeah, yeah but when that's faked you know when if that if the tears weren't real it's like the worst right because it mm -hmm. feels like a fraud so yeah it's such such an incredibly fine line and and you need it feels like you have to be connected to something bigger almost to be able to reach that i think i think we are all connected with 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 something i feel like every time i think about my music I don't think it's my music. I've always thought it's from God and I'm not religious, but I've always felt like, like just God sent me, like there's so many songs that I have done good in my career that I've re literally asked God, like, please send me a good song for this. <laughs> like I, I, wow. I just made a song for a movie and I prayed before I made it. I said, God, please send me a good song for this because I have no idea what, where to start. Like, and then it just happened and then it got picked up and now it's like a whole different thing, you know? So I, I, I feel like I've always been very connected to that. And when I don't feel connected to God or universe or something, it just doesn't make sense. I'm also the kind of musician that I'm not always playing and always trying to make songs. Like I, I listen to my spirit and if I feel like I have something to say, I just make time for it to right. be expressed. I also treat my songs as almost per, like people. Like, okay, this song wants to be this. Okay, this this song wants to talk about this, you know. Like, there's, I'm very spiritual about it, very emotional about it. Um, but I just feel like it's it's something that I, I respect a lot also because people pay for these things because they want to feel alive and connected. Mm -hmm. And they want to, like, see themselves. And so I feel like I have a responsibility to be as honest as I can. And even though sometimes I do feel like, I put myself to out there. I feel like at the end of the day, the pay out for that is way greater. It's way, way, way greater. And, and I think that's like, if I have to sacrifice me like being or feeling cool or, um, looking perfect, I I'd rather not and give that realness to people because that, that also connect us, connects us. I feel like also being like alive and human and an adult, it's so hard to connect with people and be friends and act like when we were young and we were kids. And so I, I have this, like, I, I love when people can connect. I love when there's like no barriers and it's like, Hey, what's up? You know, you're just yourself because that's like, it's one life, you know, well, as far as we know, it's just one life. And so it's like, let's just make the best of it. You know, it doesn't, you don't, you don't have to be so perfect about it. Like it, nobody fucking cares, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I do these are things that are difficult to articulate, but like I have had this thought, like the world does seem to open up to you when you open yourself to the world. And there's some kind of, it's, it does feel spiritual, you know, mm -hmm. and it's hard to explain in a rational way, maybe because there's no rational way to explain it. Yeah. Um, but there does seem to be some kind of relationship there. And I've found that every time I've opened myself up, it can be really scary. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're like, mm, is this too far? But it, it feels like it's never been too far. It's always been, I get to learn more about myself mm -hmm. and 
I don't know. It seems like the bubble that is your life expands. Mm -hmm. That's the way I see it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I I also feel like we shouldn't be too scared to take those risks, you know, because at the end of the day, it's like we're all trying to understand something. I feel like everything we do is to understand something about us. And so as close as you can get to that, I think that's that's great. I, I life is strange. Life is strange, but it's beautiful. And sometimes you just have to do things out of your comfort zone that you would have never thought could work. And then a year from now, you're like, man, so many things have happened. But we're too scared because we don't want to fail, because we don't want to be made fun of. And like to me, my friends, when I would make songs, they would tell me like, you know, nobody could relate to me because in my small town, they all wanted to be lawyers and teachers and doctors. And I wanted to sing. And so they were like, okay, so are we going to go drink? you know, later tonight. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> like it wasn't something that I could talk about. Mm-hmm. And then I just allowed myself to dream and dream and dream. And then all these things happened. And a lot of people tell me like, how are you so confident? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm just not scared. Mm-hmm. I just don't get overwhelmed by people's titles or whoever they are. I mean, of course I'll get nervous and things like that, but, but it's just, it's, but it seems it's like good. you have a big like sense of confidence or like trust in the mechanics mm. at play. Like you, you, it seems to me like you put a lot of trust in God, for example, mm-hmm. or however you want to articulate it. Yeah. And that yeah. seems to override the smaller challenges of like, Oh boy, I'm nervous or whatever. If that makes sense. Yeah. 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 No, I think so. I am a pretty nervous person and I've worked through that my whole life, but yeah, there's something that feels right. When it when it's something tells me it, that it's not right, I listen to that and I yeah. say, okay, no, I, I I just don't feel it. Like I don't want to do it, and I'm pretty blunt. I'm like, no, I don't want to do it. But when something feels right, I just do it. I'm like, life is putting me in a position where I should do this, and and it mean, it means something. It's gonna t- like make me learn something, so I, yeah. I just do it. But yeah, for the longest time, I was very um, spiritual. I'm still very spiritual. I'm just not religious. I don't like believe in a religion. Before, I used to be more like into Catholic or Christian. But lately, I've allowed myself to just like not like find my own truth, but be connected to something. And that is what I trust in. I'm like, if, if that's what it is, then... If I don't know if I'm supposed to be here having this conversation with you, then I'll do it. You know, like I don't, I don't fight with, um, like I try not to let fear take over me. Mm-hmm. I guess. Yeah. So this might expand a little bit outside of the creative process or not. I don't mm-hmm. know. But I wanted to ask you, kind of linked to my last question. You know, I guess this is related to being very sensitive, but. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel that I can feel emotions so intensely sometimes that I like have trouble unpacking that it's a little bit paralyzing sometimes in the, in the crazy stimulating world that we live in. And I sense, I sense, you know, you have a very developed emotional side to you. Mm -hmm. Does it ever feel overwhelming? Like that your emotions become almost paralyzing, you know, like that you have so much to process or. Yeah, no, yes. And how do you, (laughs) How does how do you how do you make that work in a world that isn't really built around that? It feels like you know. Well, first, I feel like I try to allow myself to just be like this is who I am. I try not to alienate myself. Like, oh, you're weird because you feel so much mm-hmm. and you're not normal. Like, no, this is who I am, and that's it. I think that has helped a lot to just accept myself that I'm like that, and it's okay. And then the, the other, so since I accept it, then I take the steps to take care of my like own bubble. And when I say bubble, it's not that anybody else is in, like supposed to be in it. No, it's more like, this is who you are. You're like, like a rose. You're very, very como, um, delicate. So like, just be uh, careful with yourself. Don't, don't put yourself out there. So I try not to like for instance something that really helps me is yoga yoga helps me a lot working out um during the week a couple of times a week helps my emotions Mm -hmm. spending time with myself i try not i try not to listen to um let's say music with lyrics before like 10 a.m 
because I try not to have so much information on me. Oh, that's great. Because I'm because I think it's because I'm a songwriter, so I'm analyzing things all the time. So I try not to like listen to anything before 10 a.m. if I'm waking up at seven because I have a couple of hours with silence or piano music or guitar music, but nothing that's giving me information. Um, I also try like just different things that can help me. I, I noticed that like, wa like taking walks helps me a lot. Um, just, I don't know, like little things that will bring peace to me. Also, I feel like the way I eat also helps me a lot, like just taking care of myself or whenever I'm throwing a lot of information at the same time, like let's say yesterday with the match, I was really excited and really happy, but at the same time I was feeling very sick. And at the same time, like I heard really bad news about some friends that like something happened really bad in Mexico. And, and so all that is like, oh my God, like I feel so many emotions. What the heck is going on? And then I just like, just breathe. I just breathe and I'm like, okay, this is life, Carla. This is literally life. This is what happens when you're alive, you know, just relax and take it all in, process it. Um, because also I used to think, oh no, I hate the era that I was born in. Like there's so much information, but then something told me you were supposed to be born in this era, like deal with it. How do you cope with it? You know? And so it's like, okay, okay. Like I'm just gonna, so I feel like it's just trying to understand who you are. <clears throat> and maybe a lot of people don't need all these, all this care, but you do, you know? So I try to, I also, you know, do things like not having coffee. I here I'm having coffee because I like it, but because it's Paris and you can <laughs> indulge. <laughs> yeah. But I usually don't have coffee. I'm yeah. usually like just tea, tea, tea. I don't have any sodas, any thing with a lot of, um, just anything that puts me like nervous. I, I don't like, I try not to do that. Um, yeah, I avoid to... scary movies. Oh, scary movies. Okay. Oh, I avoid them so much. Yeah. Anything scary. I'm like, oh, no, I'm not going to play with that. Um, anything too superficial, anything too, um, that feels like not real. I try to connect myself with meaningful stuff yeah. and things that bring me peace and that remind me that I'm human. That stuff like just like calms me down. I have a ton of plants. I love plants. Um, I play the piano. That's something that really helps me to just relax. Just like kind of listening to myself. Mm -hmm. I feel like when I have so many emotions, I like stop and I listen to what's next. Like, mm -hmm. what am I going to do next? Like yesterday I had so much wine and I'm a little hungover. <laughs> <laughs> But in, in another moment I would be so nervous and oh my God. And I had coffee and this time I was like, no, I, ha I allowed myself a slow morning, not have coffee, drink my water breathe take my cbd you know like just really like just like be my friend mm -hmm. I, i feel like that's the best thing i can do is just be my friend and be my best friend honestly because we're so judgmental of ourselves and we're always like you should you should no would you say that to your friend yeah i've, you know? I've had this thought it's like it's crazy the double standards that take place <laughs> internally yes. versus externally mm -hmm. um and i think that Well, this is one of the reasons why meditation can be really powerful, right? Because you start to pay attention to that voice and you mm -hmm. can just like notice, just notice it because otherwise it can run motor mouth, you know, in your head wreaking havoc, you know, and you don't even, you're not even fully aware of it. You just accept it because that's mm -hmm. the voice in your head. That, that's also another thing. You're, you're, the voices in your head will throw tons of shit to you and that doesn't mean anything. Like you also, you need to learn that you're, your mind will tell you crazy bad shit and you and stuff that will not make sense, stuff that is not you. And you just need to understand that that's your mind. That's how my, your mind works. But it doesn't mean anything. You don't have to be scared and be like, am I really going to lose control? Like, no, <laughs> it's just your mind being mind. Isn't that you a know? crazy thing about art and creativity? Like in many ways, mm -hmm. for me at least, I'll just say how I see it and maybe you agree or disagree, but... It feels like as I've grown in confidence in mm -hmm. self-expression and doing artistic things, um, it's almost like I've learned to not listen to the, the thoughts, not listen to the thinking brain, mm -hmm. um, because it feels like the creative process can be is so much more intuitive 
and led through almost like instinctual decisions, mm -hmm. you know, because I think if I just listened to the thoughts while working on an edit, I would be like, oh, this sucks. Well, you know, give up now or this is messy. Or, <laughs> you know, you have to like shut all of those off mm -hmm. and trust this bigger thing that's taking place. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I agree. Do you have those thoughts when you're working on oh, music? All you the do. Time. So you have a lot yes. of. Yeah. Oh, yes. I'm the worst. This sucks. Um, why are you doing this? This is not authentic. This, blah, like everything at the same time. And I've learned to just be okay with the noise, but just keep going. Right, right. You can't necessarily stop it. You can just ignore it. Mm -hmm. You know? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And a lot of people don't like living with that uh, level of being uncomfortable. <laughs> Because you're like, no, it's not. And it's just, you're always going to have that. It's normal in you, but you don't have to listen to it all the time or being dictated by it. Um, so I want to briefly touch on the fact that five years mm -hmm. went by between your most recent album and the one before. Mm -hmm. And I find that just so inspiring. I mean, <laughs> it, it, seriously, it gives me hope <laughs> because I don't want to live in a world where you have to show up constantly. Yeah. I don't believe that you can always show up with truly great work that way, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so could you tell me about that whole process? Like, mm -hmm. was it, wasn't it terrifying to be like, I'm going to stop posting on social media for a while. You took it like a year, right? Yeah, Without really like posting. Half or something. I'm going to take a while just to do my own thing and kind mm -hmm. of not disappear, but, you know, take time for yourself. Was that, was that terrifying or was it just it, it led by feeling again? Yeah, it was led by feeling. And also you're so good at that. <laughs> it was led by feeling. And also I, I wanted to kind of rebel. Like, mm. like I feel like every, everything tells you right now, like you have to do this, you know, or it does. Nobody's telling you that, but everybody's doing something related to that. So you feel like, okay, I, I shouldn't be doing the yeah. other thing. It's a highly reinforced message. Uh -huh. Yes, exactly. And I felt like I, I didn't want it to be part of that. And I just, and I also felt like this is, I'm fighting for my life right now. You know, like this is my life. This is my work. And nobody will fight for it if I don't. Like I'm the most interested one that wants it to go well. And I don't care if I don't have a career anymore, but I want to have my life back. That's what's more, most important to me. And so to me, it was it was scary for sure. Also because of the comments of my team I had at that time. But Which which was? They they were like, What are you doing? This is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, the the team in Mexico that I had, because I have a team in, in the US that has always been the same. Okay. But they but they weren't the main ones because I was in okay. Mexico. The ones in Mexico were like, Why are you doing this? How long is it gonna take? Um, like and I was just like, this isn't like, this is my spirit we're talking right. about. Like, I have no songs, honestly. Yeah. And so, I don't know. I've always been, I don't know if it's also because I'm very, um, from a very small town where like the, we know what makes us happy. Like the basic stuff makes us happy. Like, j like I remember this clearly in my mind, but I remember my happiest moments were just laying on my bed, watching the window with all the like birds and the trees wow. and just listening to that. And like feeling like the air breeze through my, you know, face and like hearing nothing and just thinking, I'm so happy. And like, those were minutes, but I remember that. And I, I remember thinking, I don't, I don't feel that anymore. And I also felt like that voice in my spirit that would say, Hey, we're going the right way. Wasn't there anymore. I couldn't hear it anymore. I couldn't hear what was right or wrong inside of me. So that was, that was more terrifying than just thinking I'll disappear. Because I thought, yeah, it, it might affect because of the algorithms and the comments, but I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm tired. I'm really tired and I don't like anyone. I don't even like myself. So I'm out, peace, like peace out. And I just left and I closed everything out. And it felt, at first, I, I feel like the first couple of weeks that we were here, I remember thinking, I was crying a lot. I remember walking through the Villette, like the, yeah, La Villette. La Villette and, in the 19th. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and just walking and crying and thinking, man, I was so sad. Like I just, a lot of th truths would come to me and be like, man, I was so sad. I wish I could hug Carla from the past mm. and be like, hey, you're going to be okay. 
and a lot, just a lot of things came to me and I felt free. It was daunting at first, but, but just because of the, what the people were telling me, but I, I knew that, and I know that virtual life isn't life. It's just virtual and that's it. What really brings meaning to your life is the relationships that you make with people. The relationship that you make with yourself is way more important than any relationship in your life. And to me, I was like, man, I don't even know myself. I don't know if I would hang out with myself if I would meet myself. And that's not right. So it just became all about me and it felt good. It felt good. It felt like I was meeting with like, you know, when you see like an old cousin that you haven't seen in a long time, you're like, oh my God, and you're just so happy. You want to do everything together. At some point after a while, it felt like that. Like I love spending time with myself. That's awesome. I love just reading and nobody telling me anything. Nobody sending me an email about, hey, you have to do this. No, nothing. Everybody, nobody can mess with me. It just felt good. And then also add to that, like learning a language and on my, you know, 30s, thinking I, that would never happen. Um, also going to school again and just learning so many new things. Like I was like, man, I'm, I'm so, I'm so smart. And I can do so many things. This is so cool. I had no idea I had so many other talents. I thought I can only, I was a one trick pony. And that it gives you like a sense of relief and power. And you just feel at peace with yourself. So you sleep better at night and just, and so whenever I, when I came back to social media, I just felt better. I didn't felt, feel controlled by it. And, and, and I think that's what we all feel kind of controlled by social media right now. Like, okay, I have to do this. I have to do, you don't have to do anything. Like the real meaning in life is life. <laughs> it's not virtual life, it's life. And you going through it and listening to your body and your spirit and your, and your ideas. And so it took a long time for me to, to really not feel, well, I mean, I haven't felt guilty about it or anything but it was more of a sense of a feeling. And when I started, you know, kind of getting close to music and thinking about doing music again, I did it also very slow. I didn't go all the way. I started to like make a song here and there and write things. And I wasn't like pushing myself. I was like baby steps because you hurt me. And then little by little, I understood that I did it myself. Right. We all, we all do it to ourselves. Oh my God, there's so much that you just said that was so beautifully articulated. <laughs> I think it is almost at this point in the world that we live in a rite of passage to go through some of this stuff, right? Because mm -hmm. you just have to learn for yourself that, that good feeling that you described, mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, wow, I'm back to doing things more on my terms again. Mm -hmm. There is no price for yes. that feeling. It's like you draw a line in the sand mm -hmm. somewhere. Mm -hmm. Um, can you tell me about like why is it important to go slow why was re-entering that world slowly again important i think it was important to me because i feel like we we usually are all very when we're younger we're very intense but we tend to, to think that things don't impact us like oh it's easy because it's fast and blah blah blah, blah. and and then you just realize that you just, <clears throat> with life and with food, with anything, you just have to take it slow. I feel like it's, it's a good way of um, just allowing life to be and chapters in your life to be because you have to kind of take it all in and you're in no rush. There's no rush for anything. People tell you or the life constantly right now is telling you to go fast, but there's no, no one's going to die. No one's, nothing's going to happen. <laughs> it like, li like life will find a way. I always remember about this analogy where at least, I mean, I don't, I've never read the Bible, but I remember somebody telling me that, um, Jesus had said something like, um, that if like dubs and, you know, um, how do you say like just animals get, uh, fed all day and, and they don't work, they don't do anything and life finds a way. Why wouldn't you, right. you know, and there's always people around you. So, I always think that we don't have to be in a rush. So for me, first, it, I took my time because I was very upset at music. I really thought it was music that had made this to me because I, I, I remember telling my mom, oh, like, I hate it when people, you know, chase me. And I was so upset. And she was like, OK, then sing bad. Sing bad, mija. Right. Do, do a really bad album. 
And I was like, ma, that's not an answer. She's like, yes, you do it good, mija. You do it right. So what do you want me to tell you? Do a bad album. I remember it cracked me up because I, I didn't want to hear that. But she just was so like, like, shut up, you know, like, just deal with it. She was pointing out the holes in what you were saying, right? <laughs> yes. And I'm like, no. But then I realized like, okay, like this is, this is something I have to deal with. So when, when, when I took my time, I realized little by little that it was, that, that it was really me, but taking it slow was gentle to myself like was nice, was being nice to myself. And I feel like that's something that we forget. We're, we're, we are so worried about productivity. We're so worried about being validated that we don't validate ourselves. And we don't take the time to really say, what do I want? What do I want? What, what does this mean to me? And like really take time to think about it. What do I want? Why do I want to write a book, Carla? Why, why do we want to write a book? Do we want to be more accepted do we want to accept ourselves more or do we want people to accept us Wait, are you saying that to me because i've mentioned writing a book no because i want to write a book <laughs> yeah <laughs> and I, i'm very focused I'm feeling on... seen right now <laughs> <laughs> no i'm saying it because i've been wanting to write a book for the longest time and i procrastinate a lot on it mm -hmm. because i'm like oh i don't have time but really i don't want to face myself and then i realize i'm like why do i why instead of writing a song. Why do you want to write a book, Carla? Like you're good at making songs. You make money. You do this. You do like it's easy. Why do you want to write a book? This is a whole different thing. You're gonna be criticized, and uh, you know, like why do you want to get into this hole? Right. She can't write or whatever. Right? Yes. Or, like I don't know what phrase you might have in your head that haunts you. Right. Yes. Like whatever the button is that people could press. Yes, and that I think about these things, but I feel like just taking time with it just so it marinates in your mind and in your soul because everything you, that you put out in the world has meaning it you we, we can't just like put things in the world just because we can like like not every singer that's a good singer is adele you know like everybody has their own journey so i feel like taking things slowly is it's almost like cooking you know like the best food is done slowly and it's like oh my god it's so good and they did it in a whole day or in a whole you know it's a whole process i feel like taking time is is just so valuable but we're told that it's not that we have to go fast because life is going fast and the numbers who cares about numbers like who cares when you want to make connections with people that's what's valid mm -hmm. Like, honestly, when I did my last album, I knew that maybe it wasn't going to be the album of the year. But I was like, if this speaks to someone, just one person, man, that's OK. That's fine. I, I just want it to speak to someone that feels lonely and shitty because that's how I felt for years. And there's nothing to feel nothing else more beautiful than to feel like seen when you feel seen that. By the way, I saw the other day the Avatar movie and there's. Yeah. This thing that they say, I see you. And I thought, oh my God, that's beautiful because in this world, nobody feels seen. That's why we're all so focused on being bloggers and like, you know, all these girls that put, you know, they're bloggers on Instagram and they put all these Prada and blah, 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 blah. You know, they, they're, they want to feel seen. We don't feel seen. And it's super sad. It's very sad. So I feel like it's just something that taking it slow and really validating ourselves is like the best gift we can give ourselves. But we're so focused on giving and giving and please validate me, please, please, please. No, validate yourself, yourself. And then you can go out in the world and validating oneself takes time. It like good things take time. And I also learned that when I went to the museums here, I would see the sculptures and I would see, you know, the Botticelli's and I was like, man, this shit took time. Yes. That's so funny that you mentioned museums because that is so exactly the same thing I thought as well. I was like, this this took years, literally years. Like, yeah. what who what are we thinking when we try to make something in a week or whatever? You know, like yeah. and on top of it, sometimes there can be bursts of creativity, right? Where I don't know if you have moments where you're very prolific. Yeah. You're like, oh, it's all coming out now. You know, yeah. but you can't time that. Yeah, no. You know, there's periods where it's just really slow, and that's mm -hmm. not a waste of time, I no. don't think. But no, I, I but, but you can. I mean, I'm still learning how to not spin my wheels when I'm like, 
I have nothing to show for this time, you know, because mm-hmm. that because that's that's when all the critics or people that don't understand what you're doing go like you're not doing anything right now, you know. Yeah. But it is so much more about the process, I think. Than... And it's also a lot of um, how do you say this? Um, like people are projecting themselves in you. Yeah. And you just you just can't take that personal. I used to take that personal, but. Now it's like, no, this is my process mm-hmm. and that's it. But we all, we're also people pleasers. Yeah. And creatives are people pleasers. So obviously Wait, you, you saw my last video, didn't you? No, no, no. Which one? My mom said that to me. She was just like, you confuse that for love. You know, that's like pleasing people. Yeah. She, th- oh, she, no, she, no, no, she, so she was telling me exactly that. She was saying exactly that. She was like, yeah. you're a people pleaser. You think that you know, making people happy in that way is love. And it's not, it's, it's actually being genuine. It's actually showing up and being Uh solid on what matters to you. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. 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 (sighs) Wow. It feels so good to hear that be said. Um, but it's also very easy to get a little bit mixed up on that. Right. Cause you can get, you can, for so much of my life, I thought like I need to make people around me happy and that's, that's yeah. how you show love, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but it seems like when shit hits the fan, you really got to take a stance for yourself, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it's interesting that you mentioned your team in Mexico not understanding the decision. Aren't um, they supposed to be supporting you? Mm-hmm. And it's in those moments where you really got to, you you have to take that stance for yourself mm-hmm. because you're right. It is your life. And if you're not going to fight for it, other people will happily make decisions for you, right? Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, and it's your life and it's your responsibility, but we I feel like we forget the value of being alive and doing what we do. Whatever that it is that you do. Like whoever. Like if you're just a mom, which being a mom is an amazing thing, but if you're just like doing that and we forget how valuable we are because mm-hmm. we don't take a look at ourselves. We don't we don't look at ourselves a lot at all. And I think that's something that needs to happen more and needs to be taught more. Totally. You know, because we're just, we just want to put like a face, but we don't like, like there, oh, actually, now that, I, that I'm mentioning this, I remember um, when we moved, my, a friend told me, why don't you make an Instagram account for just yourself and like your closest family and friends? And oh, I was like, like a private account? Yeah, like a private account. I'm like, why? Nice. I, I like, made one like that. Yeah. And I was like, what? But why? Isn't that the same as being in social media? And she was like, no, no, no. Because at least you have, you you have like a like a diary from all this process and it will be yours and like from the closest people that you have. And I was like, I don't know. And I thought about it and then I was like, you know what? Okay, I'll try it. And then I, I did it and I just had like a couple of like family members, really close ones. And I just started doing it. And then I realized like I could look at myself because there was so, there wasn't so many people looking at it. It was just a couple, like 10 And that made me realize also like who I was and what I was really enjoying about this whole thing. And I was like, oh, this is me. Wow. This is not like the artist. This is just Carla. That's awesome. Like what I'm doing. And Mm -hmm. it made me feel like I could really look at myself. But when you have like an open account and, you know, you also do things because you want to, you know. And so that's something that I feel like we don't do enough. And so we don't feel embarrassed when we do things. We just feel like, oh, yeah, it's part of being on social media, right. etc. You yeah. did kind of do like an eat, pray, love sort of thing, right? You think so? A little bit. I mean, in a, in a, I say <laughs> yeah. that in a positive way. Like yeah, yeah. you went, you're like, I need to make a giant change here. And I am really going to try to learn how to live according to whatever... I'm hearing from that mm-hmm. inner voice, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, we talked about this the other yeah. day when you came over, and mm-hmm. it's like a thing I feel like I'm figuring out in real time right now. That's why I say it feels like a rite of passage because you're describing all this stuff <laughs> that I'm like, oh my God, I went through exactly that, you know? <laughs> but it, it, you, you know, um, having these conversations definitely gives me hope for rediscovering, right? Realigning. Yeah. It is possible. You, but, you know, and life is oftentimes about kind of getting lost or taking detours and then getting back on track, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and not being hard on yourself for mm-hmm. 
derailing or that sounds like a judgment, right? But like mm-hmm. not for getting a little bit deviated from, how did you describe it earlier? That inner voice within you that was telling you we're on the right track. Yeah. Like your gut. Yeah. I feel like. yeah. yeah. I also, f- I have all also felt like life is kind of like, it's the journey. Like l- life is like when you're driving a car and you get like, you know, green lights or red lights or yellow lights or you're stuck in traffic. Like that's life. And you're just going to get to like, to the point of like, I don't know, a mountain, but you're going to go through a lot of things. And when you get to the point of the mountain, the point is not to get there, but the whole journey you went through and, you know, making mistakes and owning up to them and just knowing that, oh, I should have done this better. And and it's just being gentle to yourself, just being Mm. nice, just being kind. And I know it sounds very Zen and very ambiguous, when you say be kind to yourself, but like really the practice of it, like really finding what makes sense to you. And like you said, because I hadn't, I haven't seen that video, but you're like your mom said, like, like just being, cause at times like I can, I can have, I can be very, um, peaceful at times I can have like a resting bitch face and people think I'm mad and I'm like I'm not mad I'm thinking about bread I don't know that's so better than my resting face you know what it is (laughs) mine's resting surprised face like with the big eyes I'm just like I'm just like this all the time so it's way worse well I like my husband he's like are you okay I'm like yeah what's wrong he's like are you mad I'm like no I'm not mad he's like I feel like you're mad I'm like no I'm not pissed and so that happens a lot yeah and I've noticed that when I've when I'm on tour, I try to be very like pleasing and I want everybody to feel very calm about Mm -hmm. it. And lately I just allow myself, I'm having a bad day. I'm just having a bad day. And I just allow myself to be quiet and people respect that. And they don't, you know, they don't want me to feel happy. They respect it when I'm pissed and they respect it when I'm having a good Mm -hmm. time. And, and that gen, like being that genuine, feeds into people too they're like oh okay this is carla here and then this is carla here and then and so i feel like that really also gives you peace and and people pleasing is not only just like what do you need you know it's more like just being yourself Mm -hmm. because then people get to know who you are and that's just a relationship that's being built yeah you know and you put it in such a great concise way which is at that time in your life it's either going to be bad music or no music, right? You mm-hmm. know, and the the time taking that time was pretty much the only option to get back on track to make things that felt meaningful and mm-hmm. well produced and done with the soul, right? Yeah. So it's in that way when you put it like that, it's like a it's a pretty clear decision. And yeah. I know faced with that decision, I know which option I'm going to take, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think you can kind of try to fool yourself for a while and think like, no, I can push through or whatever, but. I don't know. There's something about maybe getting older and and wanting to go deeper with things forces mm-hmm. you to confront that reality, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, I feel like people take um, all these things very lightly, but it's your life. What's that game? You know? Yeah. At the end, like, who knows? You, I can go downstairs and be run over by a oh car, my and, God. I, and I die. <sighs> you know? No. What I'm saying is that life can just be done in a second. Yeah. And then you're just like, you're not, if you don't, and it, also I don't think you should take your life super serious all the time, but I do think that just being meaningful. Remembering the importance that it has. Yes. Remembering yeah. the importance that it has and that things that you do and you say have an impact yeah. to whoever you, you say. And, and that's why I love your work. Cause I feel like what you do is that is like you put meaningful stuff out there that really connects with people that are taking chances and are trying to, you know, move abroad or, or, you know, buying a new apartment or doing things. It's like, oh, okay. I like, there's this like place in, 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 in the internet that understands me in a different way, you know, because I'm different because usually people are doing kind of the same things, you know? And, and that's why I like your work. I'm like, man, this is so cool. Like I feel seen. I feel like somebody's going through what I'm going through, you know, and you're so young too. So I feel like if whatever time you take, um, I don't think people are going to be like, oh, you know, like whatever. Yeah. Like It's no. so much more of a big deal in your own head too. Oh, yes, yes. And now looking back, it was like genius. You were a genius to take this time because look at how amazing the latest album ended up being, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's so ballsy too in many ways like because you take 
a lot of creative risks and I yeah. feel you, you, you do not keep any allegiances. Like you're like, I'm sorry, you got to know me for this reason. Well, I'm coming with something fresh now. <laughs> so that's yes. gotta be a little scary too. Yeah, it is to keep scary. it changing, but you got, you, you kind of have to, right? Once you've mastered a format, you can't do that for the rest of your life. Right. Yeah. And also I think I wasn't scared because I wasn't trying not to be me. I was just exploring an, yeah. another area of my life being me. That's why it was never scary. Yeah. Because when, when we started doing pop, my my husband was like, oh, Carla, are you really want to do this? I'm like, <laughs> like, really? I'm like, yes, I want to do it. He's like, are you sure? I'm like, yes. He's like, oh, man, I don't know. Like, I'm like, I trust me. Like, let's, you know, let's do it. And I feel like a lot of people didn't like really like it but they accept it and then other people did and i was like that's fine i don't have to be perfect for everyone i don't want to i don't want to be liked by everyone isn't that absolute freedom when you can accept that as well oh boy that's also a tough one i no matter what will not be liked by everyone and that's okay yes yes and that's something that i also learned in therapy my therapist told me that Mm. she was like Cause I remember telling her, there's people that tell me really like bad things. There's people that tell me this and they don't see what I'm really working on and blah, blah, blah. And then she was like, Carla, like, how can I tell you this in a good way? But not everybody will like you. And that's fine. Mm. And I was like, what? She's like, yeah, you won't be liked by everyone. People will not like you just because the way you look like there's no reason. They'll just be like, I don't fucking like her. And I'm like, and what am I? Nothing. You're not perfect. And that's okay. And I was just like, oh, nobody had been so blunt about it right. and, and said it because she was also a singer at some point. And so that kind of like I understood it in a whole different level. Oh, but, that's cool. but it's hard. It's hard when you want to please people because you want people to be happy. Mm-hmm. But, you know, people have their own stories and we have to let them be. Mm-hmm. That's a, a, that also gives you freedom to be like, OK. Like I have issues sometimes with people in my family and I want to help them and I really want to help them and I have everything to help them and they don't want to take the help. Right. And it's like, okay, that's not my story. This is my story. So that's all I can do. Yeah. Wow. Well, my God, this was such an amazing conversation. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. For, you know, doing this with me for the lovely answers and, <laughs> um, I, I love that you were willing to go as abstract as I wanted to go, basically. <laughs> so thank you for that. No, you're welcome. Thank you. No, thank you, Nathan. De verdad. You're you're very good at what you do. Don't be scared about wherever you're gonna detour to. Why are you so sweet to me? No, because you really do really great things, and I don't think you see it. And that's a lot. That's a lot of people's um, struggles that they don't see it, and and I feel like sometimes we're too in our head. Yeah. And we feel like, no, 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 no. And that's something that I've learned to appreciate in a, in a different way because I was always very hard on myself. And then I, one time I saw everything that people saw, like could see in me. And I was like, oh, I understand now. And it's some, like, I think one of the things that happened to me was when we opened for Coldplay and I got to meet them. Just real quick. Um, <laughs> yeah, totally. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember telling. What, remember, a, what a hell of a story, honestly. Damn. <laughs> And I remember telling them like we were there hanging out and they were like they were just being super nice, super sweet. And then I just like when I met them, I'm like, I want to be really cool, guys, but I can't. Like I love you, and I started crying, <laughs> <laughs> like with tears, like it, like oh just my running God. down my face. And they're like, <gasps> like they just, and I'm like, fuck, I'm fucking this up because <laughs> I'm not supposed to be a fan. Like I'm opening for these guys, and I'm like, yeah. you guys have been my friends without knowing that you guys have been my friends for like my life like really like every album every song like blah and i just said thank you this is this just means so much to me and i remember they were like no 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 you're welcome and and they said something like i remember chris saying like um when we start making music we want people to come to our shows because we need them Mm -hmm. but at this point they need us to come because they need us to come on tour because they want to hold on to something. So every time we're tired or we're like, oh my God, this is such a long tour. We think about how they need us, you know, and we do it for that. And I remember thinking, wow, that's awesome. So when people see me and they're like, I love you, man. Like, and they start crying and I'm like, and I, I go back to that moment where I cried, 
when I was in front of them and how meaningful that was to me. And so it gives me a perspective of how the things that I'm doing impact people. Yeah. So I feel like maybe you don't see it because you might see the comments. <laughs> <laughs> you might see the clicks and the views and all that, but I don't think you can see, you know, people all the time that like see your content be like, wow, this is really great. This is really thoughtful. It's just amazing. Like it's good. You, you do good work. And I feel like in a world where there's so many YouTubers and there's, there's so much morning routine and blogs and really stupid content that you, is just bad. And then there's other content that speaks to you and tells you something and, and leaves you thinking and makes you really ref reflect on life, your decisions that you're making. Like, just it's just nice. It's really, it's really um, warm to your heart. You're like, oh, this is really great. And also your dad, like, yeah. you know, it's like, wow, this is really cool. Like, it, it may, like I even show your, your videos and your dad's to Alejandro, to my husband, because we both feel so seen, like, oh, wow, this is so crazy. People actually, there's people out there that think like us, yeah. that feel like us, that their culture doesn't completely dictate who they are. Um, like just so many different elements right. that are just like, man, this is just like us. And it connects you. And it's really, really cool. So I, I, don't, I don't think, I mean, I have the opportunity to feel when fans tell me these things because I tour, but you don't tour. You're just yeah, like no. you do. <laughs> So, I mean, you see people, but you know, yeah. so I feel like I'm not just being sweet to you. It's really what you do. Like it, it's really cool. And I feel like whatever detour you take or wherever area you move to, it's, it's going to be appreciated because you're just genuine yeah. and you're just like, you, you, you lead with your heart. And I feel like that is just super valuable in a heartless world sometimes. Wow. I'm so touched. I mean... <laughs> I, I the the thing I take away from that is that the numbers and the metrics will never capture this what mm -hmm. you just said mm -hmm. and and if you feel an impulse to lean into that mm -hmm. you gotta listen to it you know because I, I feel that sometimes I feel a kind of a crisis I'm like how can I ever make a thumbnail and title or whatever that captures the love that I poured into this you know or um you know, right, like just the tyranny of the numbers where I'm, I'm, I want things to hit a certain point or I don't want sponsors to be disappointed or whatever, but really, you know, I just have to pour that love into it and, and let that be the thing that reaches people organically. Yeah. Um, and I, I feel yeah. the exact same way about your music and, you know, it, it, to me, it is infinitely better instead of just pumping out a new album every six months or whatever. Yeah. That you chose to do it in your way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and so. you know what? Maybe if you, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to like say anything, but I feel like if you had more of this feedback, because to me, when I have this feedback from my fans, it really inspires me in so many yeah. ways. Yeah. And I feel like not for you to be inspired to do more of YouTube videos, but to know where you're going. Right. And I feel like, because it is super valuable what you do. And, I, and the numbers aren't like just because you work really hard and they're really pretty videos. Like, no, they, they the numbers are big because you're a pretty big hearted person, you know? <laughs> My gosh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And but... so I don't feel like it's like, oh, OK, but I feel like maybe if you would like listen from this, like from fans or people that follow you, it would be so different for you because you'd be like, OK, I'm doing something right. You know, maybe I should go this way. Maybe I should go this way. Maybe, yeah. and your your ideas would be so different. But since you just do the videos and you read the comments, yeah, it's a whole different thing. It's not the same. When I read comments that are really nice to me, I'm like, oh, that's so nice. But when they tell me these comments in person, I'm like, oh, wow, like it's just so much magic, yeah, just thrown back to me. It's like, wow, this is amazing. Then I should do this and this and this, and then I I get so inspired. Yeah. But when I don't see it, when I'm not on tour, I'm like at home, I'm like, okay, I'm fine. But when I'm on tour and I see people crying and yeah. telling me this saved my life, like I went through a horrible divorce and like, really you were there holding my hand. I'm like, oh wow. Oh my God. <laughs> Never thought about this. Right. So I feel like I don't, you don't maybe experience that. And maybe that's why sometimes you don't know if you're doing it right or wrong. Yeah. And well, I'm saying it. That's why I'm saying it. But I think it's awesome. It's like visually, it's beautiful. 
like I, I think how does he do like does he write this before he's like <laughs> like I think about this I'm like is he does he write this before how does he like capture the perfect moment then you're laughing with your parents and then you're doing this and then I'm like how does no no the how? laughing with my parents is not scripted but <laughs> no 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 just like the beautiful <laughs> visuals no, no, totally, totally. like it's just so on yeah. time I'm like wow this editing is beautiful like the color like just the structure the way he like developed the message the timing like because i think about all these things and i'm like wow this you is have an analytical mind i can tell that you you like to get you like to know the behind the scenes yes yes i love everything of that and i'm like i'm, I'm thinking and i'm like how does he does this yeah. this is so greatly done like it's great and so i watch your videos and i'm like man this is awesome this left me with something yeah and i don't think you hear that enough so that's that is just unbelievably sweet i don't know <laughs> how to even respond i'm a little bit embarrassed right it's now. okay it's okay but it does it does remind me it is so good to have real world feedback in such a yes. digital world i yes. totally agree yes. and there are things that i'd like to do where i can interact with more people in real life because there is something special about that mm -hmm. you know even this even doing yeah. this conversation in person it's different than yeah. if this was a zoom call mm -hmm. in many ways mm -hmm. um, and i value that so Thank you so much. No, thank you. <laughs> wow. My goodness. <laughs>